Hello and welcome to my Pillars of Eternity Definitive Edition Blind Playthrough Part number 59. In the last episode, uh, we finally arrived at the White March uh, Part 2 expansion area, the Iron Flay Fort, and we somehow messed up, and because we were uh, detected or found out how to how when we were trying to infiltrate the camp, we somehow had to clear the camp out of all the enemies. So, today we will uh, probably finish the last two places to go in the aerial flight fort and then go to the Dargan's battery again. So, let's start today. So, this is our party for today, Orlan, Cypher, Durance, Maneha, Zawa, Devil of Karok and Kana. And this is where we are. Everyone in the party is already level yes. 16, so let's check it. Oh, so this is nothing. Then certainly. Let's go inside the camp. Please listen. Enough! I've had my fill of... What's this? Steady, men. Our guest has arrived. The Iron Flail Commander is a younger man, lead in build. His brown hair is unkempt, his eyes fevered. At his feet is a grate set over what appears to be a pit. You hear a smattering of anxious cries rising from the cell as the commander steps forward. <laughs> All that chaos outside. For an instant I believed you, woman. His boot comes down hard on the grate. But he's only a common assassin. I'd prefer to settle this peacefully. I'm sure you would, now that you're here. You want to talk? Set down your... Ederick's war die in his throat. His expression frozen melt snarl. It isn't clear what's happened. Not until you start to feel it too. Unbidden, your senses drift as if you had reached out toward a source of essence. You feel an ache in your chest. An almost painful sensation of being pulled forward. A sudden wave of memories floods your mind, clear as the day they formed. You see a Damascus campsite ravaged by the Bayavec, the halls of Kednua. In the caverns beneath the cape, the stone around you blows a warning in a death language. Deeper still, a fanged mo parts like a wound in the world. The, image, uh, the images wash over you, tracing lives and emotions from a hundred different times and places. Not all are your own. Slowly, you become aware of the sensation of being watched. Reach out. As you direct your senses, tracing the invasion to its source, Elderic, conviction burns through him, bright as brazier. For an instant, you share his emotion, and the sourceless desperation rattles about your skull. Absent context, the fragments of memory you see are just images. A small house across a field of vibrant 
purple flowers, a sea of armored kith, and flopping banners waving on your command. There's an uncomfortable where you feel your twined awareness uh, turning in on itself, and then the connection is severed. Ederic looks startled, uh, his face ashen. Guess you weren't expecting that. Yo. You're the Watcher at Cadnua? They said he was a senile hermit. My world is dead. Cadnua is mine now. Why have you come? Why now? I came to find out what happened to delegates. The delegates? You tore through my camp, killed my men for them? I would have done things another way, if I could have. You could have turned around! If not for the delegates, all of this could have been avoided. Stalwart sent delegates to discuss terms of peace. I offered them the opportunity. I was generous. Ederic paces a few steps before he gets hold of himself. But Stalwart sent soothsayers, not diplomats, to frighten us with stories of the moon going dark, the earth shaking. I would speak to the people who have seen these wild visions to compare notes. Uh, it's true. It's all true. The ways will swallow us all. A shrill voice uh, suddenly rises up from the pip. Ederic stomps down angrily on the bars, drowning her out. You don't think you overreacted a little? Don't! Don't play the fool with me! These omens are meant to frighten me, to make me doubt my purpose here. But there is more at stake here than a village in the mountains. They dismiss my faith, call us superstitious. But what does Stalwart believe in? Iron and gold, and nothing else. I have tilled barren fields with my bare hands. What is gold to me? He looks down at the gate of the cell, eyes flushing with sudden anger. What do you want with Stalwart anyway? With a village of fishermen, nothing. But they cling fiercely to the forge you gave them. Some of the men are here for gold and good steel, and I promised them their share. But I came for cannons. With the battery's cannons, we can hold the pass. Rayad Saris has suffered enough. Its sons and daughters have nothing. We cannot sit and wait for an attack from the Deerwood. There is an army coming. I've seen it. Pouring down from the mountain. It will crush Stalwart and come for Rayad Saris. Ederic's gaze is distant. The Iron Flail will be the wall that safeguards my homeland from the worst these fire-worshippers can bring to bear. Between the Duke's assassinations and the Holoborn crisis, Deerwood's a little preoccupied. So I believed. Hoped, maybe. But that only means they're angry. They'll look for someone to blame, an enemy to fight. Wait, you had a vision of an army? I warn you, if you think to taunt me, Watcher. I had a vision too. 
in mine. I saw Kednoa reduced to rubble by an army that shook the earth. Dope's Cree sees Adric's bro, his men exchange looks, waiting tensely for orders. Why would they turn on their own? No. You're trying to trick me. This is all another distraction. All that destruction we saw. You really think a bunch of buckwater fools can do that? If they were to come together, perhaps. If they built another of Magran's devices. Adaric sounds unsure. I thought the Iron Flail might be the army in own in my own vision. Perhaps we both made a mistake. Why should I believe any of this? You would say anything at all to protect Stalwart. Think, what if you're wrong? We are losing men and resources fighting people who aren't your enemies. You saw to that! You dare blame their deaths on me! That's not what I meant. Adric gives a contemptuous note. I remember Thunder and a hundred eyes gazing back at me. Any of that sounds familiar? The thunder followed me to the temple at dawn's reach and the earth split beneath our feet. Read my soul. What did that tell you? That you're soft-hearted, but it hasn't seemed to stop you. And that you have seen and done a great many things, things I would not have otherwise believed. We both know something's coming. Maybe two watchers can figure out how to stop it. For several moments uh, there is nothing but silence in the cabin. Then you hear the scrape of metal as Adric takes up his sword, only to lay it flat across his palms. I led my people here because I believed we were on the right path. I bound my soul to this blade as proof of my surety. There is a ripple of soul energy in the air, there and gone. Ederic looks pained. The sword's no good to me now. It's yours, for as long as you can wield it. I'll call in our forces from the mountains. Please, give me time to explain. You should speak with Stalwart's messengers. Perhaps you'll get some answers out of them. Mamulian was granted Seaver of Seaver the Soul. I have come to face to face with the force commander. He has stalwart delegates in captivity, and it's unlikely take my intrusion well. Ederic imprisoned the stalwart delegation in a cell built into the earth floor of his cabin. With the commander out of the way, they can be released. And what we do get for a uh, stuff? Sever the soul. Good. Let's see what lies this way. And let's check the sword we got. Looks like everyone can, can use it. Hmm. 
Well, well, well. Let's see. Oh, look at here. Oh, thank you. I thought we'd never get out of there. Are you hurt? No, a little bruised, perhaps. The cold was the worst part. I don't know how you managed to talk that man down. He was practically foaming at the mouth. And now, he and his men are still skulking around in the mountains. I'm not sure letting him lie was the best idea. The commander wasn't the problem. One of the delegates points an uh, accusing finger at another, a woman standing apart from the rest. We might have come to terms if she hadn't goaded him, shouting at him about omens and curses, demanding he leaves the march. You know how super superstitious the Ritzerans are? The commander went white as a sheet. She sabotaged the meeting. The woman in question is dressed in, in assuming robes. She bears the accusation silently, her eyes closed as if in prayer. Care to explain yourself? With desperate speed, the woman suddenly lunges sidelong towards a nearby rack and sizes a dagger lying there. She sets the blade on her own throat. <laughs> Unseen to all but yourself, the dying woman's soul essence goes in thin wisps about her body. It only grows brighter as her corpse still stills. The remaining delegates stir in horror at her boiling blood. Manea kneels by the dying woman and inspects her robes. She examines a crescent medallion hanging around the woman's neck. W what just happened? Damn it. No, we'll never get an answer out of her. Read the woman's soul. Well, first, did they pull your names out of a hat when they put his delegation together? We all volunteered. She seemed perfectly normal. A little intense, maybe. Read the woman's soul. 
you reach out and brace against the sudden flare of pain and fear, digging after less recent events. There is a copper taste in your mouth and a pain-like fire in your throat. Under the brute terror of death, you find a comforting threat of resolve, of satisfaction in duty fulfilled. You follow it. It leads you stumbling into another memory, as whole, as vivid as the first. You walk the dark halls of an abbey, dimly lit and quiet, your footstep loud, a blur, and you are standing in a dimly lit room, facing a robot Amawa. You recognize him as Kaoto, the high abbot. He beckons you forward. Examine your surroundings. You are in a white round the chamber. The tiles beneath your feet are covered in strange curling symbols. You recognize them as the symbols of Ondra, goddess of sea and memory. The memory blurs when, you, when your sight is clear. You are standing in front of Kaoto, and he is smiling gently down at you. Drive the raid series from these mountains, and you may yet spare many lives. The Tidebringer will be here in a week's time. Should you be delayed in your travels, report to him as you would to me. He will enter the reliquary and call off the army of Ilas in my stead. If you are caught, sister, you know what you must do. I will pray for your return, but we will take comfort in the knowledge that you have joined the rest of Andra's favorite in her keeping. The word jar you lose from the memory, flinging you back into the moment of the woman's death and then into your own skin. But traces of her memory join yours. You know the path of the abbey to which she was to return, buried in the mountains to the north. Is the name Eyeless familiar to anyone? The Eyeless? They are a figure of speech for when you can't remember something. You say, must be the Eyeless took it from me. Yes, yes, but there's a story to it. They're supposed to do the bidding of the Lady of Lament. Ondra points, and they come, out of nowhere, wipe things from the face of the world. That's why never. That's why whenever something up and goes missing or gets destroyed, with no one dares to see it, you're supposed to thank Ondra for that. Uh, the Eyeless didn't count come for you too. Do you know a Kauto? Kauto? Oh yes, he came through town some time back. Stepped. Uh, uh, the temple in Stalwart. This was just after the town decided to rededicate it to Abaddon. He didn't seem too pleased about it. He was dressed like priest. Maybe he took offense. He is an Omawa, tall fellow, very polite, considering he's apparently the leader of some fanatical sect. I think it's clear we haven't been the best judges of character recently. Do any of you know what a Tidebringer is? Tidebringer? That's something they used to talk about the Temple of Ondra, I think. It's a person, a title, I mean. Tends to be used in the more uh, devout circles. What about the Eyeless? Have you heard of them? The Eyeless, they're a figure of speech for when you can remember something. You say, must be the Eyeless took it from me. Yes, yes, but there's a story to it. They're supposed to do the bidding of the Lady of Lament. Ondra points and they come, out of nowhere, wipe things from the face of the world. That's why whenever something up and goes missing or gets destroyed with no one there to see it, you're supposed to think, Ondra, that the Eyeless didn't come for you too. Well, one more time. Uh... Do you know anything about an abbey to the north? I've heard of something like that, an Ondraite stronghold. Not the kind of place that welcomes visitors. Maneha eyes widen. That sounds like the abbey of the fallen moon. Is that where she came from? 
the delegate points uh, to the dead woman. She didn't make it back to call of whatever attack they were planning. What, another one? Gods, uh, it feels like everyone on Eora is after the battery now. Why would these Andrites want their veterans out? I doubt it's for Star Wars benefit. Competition, maybe? Looks like I fold up their plans in any case. If you do mean to go to this abbey, be careful. There have been stories about traders wandering north and getting scared of or even killed by strange guards. That's the place, all right. They're a secretive bunch. I suppose you could always try to sneak in. I doubt you'll be welcome otherwise. It sounds like this Tidebringer would be welcome, I mean. Maybe I can convince them I'm the one they've been waiting for. I hope so. I imagine the Abbey is heavily guarded. A sudden deafening crash from outside makes the delegate jump. Startled and rumbling around the town that follows, you hear for the sounds of smashing timbers panicked screaming. Oh no, what's happening? I told you to take care of the soldiers. I did. This is something else. Yes, well, we'll wait here, inside. It turns out that one of the delegates sabotaged the negotiations. She took her own life before she could be questioned in the usual way. From her memories, I have gleaned knowledge of the temple complex she was sent from. Any further investigation, we'll have to wait. I've been interrupted by the sounds of conflict just outside. Yes? Ah. Oh. Nothing interesting in her Certainly. pocket, so let's check it out. What the hell is that? This is animancy or something far foul, if not. This is animancy or something far fouler, if not. Don't even care. Let's use this. The fuck? At least this works. Now it's injured. So let's see what the hell we can do with some spells. Oh, 
Well, first let's... Heal to my guys and... And now... Let's do this. You change to the crossbow. Wow. Zahua is a little bit problematic and... Oh, I forgot about Kana spells. Let's try to stun him and and he is down. Let's try to stun him, but I doubt it will work. them are down. As the last Mechfold falls, a tide of essence sweeps through the ether. It washes over you and you find yourself in the memories of the Eyeless. The hulking creatures surround you, their sinew wrapped skeletons clanking and screeching in the semi-darkness. Their bodies fill the air with the tank of metal and the mask of sweat. The cavern in which you stand, it looks like a cavern anyway, glows with a dim ambient light. Steel flushes as the eyeless shift and stir. They stamp their feet and groans in rasping metallic voices. Their restless energy pricks, uh, prickles at the back of your neck. Uh. And in the echoing rumble you hear something familiar. It's the pounding noise from your dream, the harbinger of the terrible army. You begin to wonder how many islets are crowded around you. You suspect there must be scores of them, maybe more. It's difficult to tell how far back this chamber goes, or where it is. Ahead you see a glint of light. It might be an exit. Already, however, the vision is starting to fade. Explore further into the chamber. You push past the lumbering eyeless and cling to the wilting shreds of the vision. The cavern browns before you, it swells with echoes until you hear the growling, grinding sounds of the eyeless and all around. You pull yourself onto a glowing crystalline outcropping and survey the expanse of blunt heads and piston arms. 
There aren't scores of them. There are hundreds. The vision ends, returning you to the frozen and blood-churned mud of the fort. Ederick appears to have taken some blows, there is a purpling bruise along his temple, and his armor is dented in several places. He looks rather dazed. Those things, they, they came from all sides. The delegate... no, you were right. The visions are true. Ederick looks over... Ederick looks you over. You fought well. And I am glad to see you have come through in one piece. Even if I regret the loss of my men. I'll take what's left of our forces. Those that will follow me further up the mountain. We should be prepared if... When those monsters return. We can defeat them if we work together. I have seen already that there is little you can't accomplish. Edric bows his head and turns to the road. You don't mess around when you make enemies, do you? Okay, and the Royona's breastplate is interesting. Rest in the Alpine's Dragon Rail after it has been slain. So, this will need... few more... dangerous encounter to finish. If only Galvino could see those. <laughs> He'd die of envy. Or crushing. Okay, we got new quests, so let's check them first. First the Iron Flail. I was able to defuse the precarious situation with the Iron Flail and gain a potential ally in the process. Commander Adric, a fellow watcher, stole what is safe from the Red Serens for the time being, but the real threat has emerged, an army of towering creatures known as the Islas. One of the stalwart delegates was a fanatical worshipper of Ondra, who killed herself before she could provide answers. I learned from her soul that she came from the Abbey of the Fallen Moon, and that the abbot there knows of the army and is able to call it off from a place he called a reliquary. If I can reach the room, I may be able to stop an invasion before it begins. The abbot also mentioned that someone called a Tidebringer would be coming to replace him. That information could prove useful in infiltrating the place. Uh, the Abbey of the Fallen Moon may hold the key to stopping the army I have seen in my dreams. One of stalwart delegates sent to parley with the Iron Flail was an android Andrade dispatched from an abbey to the north and tried and dissuade the Red Serens from their course. It seems as Stauff, the leader of the abbey, and a man named Kaoto knew how to call off the monstrous army. He mentioned that would be done in the reliquary. He also spoke of an expeditor, expected visitor, a Tidebringer, who would take his place. From the under itself, I was able to absorb knowledge of the path to the Abbey. I must travel there if I am to stop this threat. Oh? Okay, now I'm just really, really sorry that I had to kill off a lot of the guys. Uh -oh. Well, anyway, we have one more talk with Vaneha. I guess we should be flattered that someone sent those things after us. But I would have preferred a card. She wipes a slick of gore from her neck, sniffs at her blood-streaked hand and shrugs. I'd heard rumors of the Eyeless, but I always thought that name was a metaphor. Though I would have called them Mace Hands of Doom, if anyone had asked me.
Uh, not non comitelli. So this is the mysterious army you've been dreaming about, huh? It's a wonder you're getting any sleep. That's why we're going to the Abbey, to stop them. <sighs> I'm regretting all of my decision-making up to this point. Still, I guess a suicidal plan is better than none. I thought you'd be happy. You've been looking for the Abbey a long time. I know, it's just... Uh... She grumples with exasperation. Well, knowing that I'm finally close to getting rid of this memory, it, it feels like it's crowding my head that much more. She paces and locks her fingers into her hair. It's been with me for decades. Driven me halfway across the known world. She throws her hands up. This would be just easier if you just told me what you remember. <sighs> she stops pacing and sighs. You're right. Take your time. It was a war. Centuries ago, before a deer in unification. She folds her hands in the front of herself. I was a soldier then. Led a campaign across the northern forests to subdue some of the outlying Kalkland villages. Brutal work. Go on. Well, I don't understand what war. This was 500 years ago, when Adir was a folk kingdom on one side and elven country on the other. They fought on and off before they joined. Now the folk and elven rulers marry to keep the peace. Go on. Right. The campaign. Lost a third of my forces to the forest, and another third to the elven scouts hiding in it. By the time we reached the first village, we'd crushed their defenses. And they'd bled us. She shakes her head. Wasn't much more than children and the elderly left. But they spit on us when we marched into town. A skull twists her face. Her eyes are cold. The village elders surrendered and offered us lodging in the old meeting hall. And when the sun set, they tried to burn it down around us. She closes her eyes. They barely got a flame going, but that wasn't the point. They betrayed you after surrendering. Seems serious to me. And would that I'd had your principles. In their defiance, I saw months more of pointless, bloody battle as we fought for the rest of the region. I had to break them. And I had to send a message to the rest of the villages. Her hands shake as she raises them to cover her face. So I nailed every last one of them to the trees around the town and left them there to die. What happened then? I never remembered more. Eventually, Adir and Kulklin united. The gentlefolk forgave each other for what they'd done to each other's people. You killed those villagers to prevent more fighting? That's what I kept telling the troops. She's quiet for a long time before she speaks again. But if I'm honest, I was angry. I wanted to see pain. And I wanted to be the one holding a blade. You've been a mercenary and a pirate in this life. Is that really so different? I've done my share of fighting these forty-odd years. But I've never drawn my blade just to watch someone bleed. And I've never drawn it on someone who didn't have his own in hand. Well, that wasn't you, Manea. So I've tried to tell myself. Anyway... We should get going. She shoulders her pack and you catch a glimpse of something unusual in a thick roll of cloth bound by leather. What's that? Something I've been saving for better days. She tucks it away. Let's go. So that was another part of her character quest. The last one which I still need to finish. And the stronghold quest. 
the crossed eye. In the court of Boeing Ashes stands a towering Adra statue interwoven with living trees. Dating back to the Anguithans, it is believed to represent an all round ruler of the lost empire. Tough, the natural progress of time has done some damage to it. The Glanfortuners remember one act of vandalism against it the, from the early colonial days. During the chaos of the Broken Stone War, Adair explorers ventured deep into Erglanfath, made their way into the court of uh, Boeing Ashes, and scaled the statue to break loose a single eye, large as an Emoa's head and made of pure Adra band. Most of the members of that band were captured and killed by the Glanfadans, but the eye was never recovered. In recent eye, in recent years, rumors had spread through the eastern range that a new owner of the eye has been attempting to sell it through covered markets. The Anamfatha of the last three tribes would reward anyone who would recover it. It took extensive searching and inquiry across three countries, but the Green Mother eventually picked up the trail of the stolen Adraban eye. Following the broken stone war, the Amawa thief traveled to South to Abeth, uh, then on to Nasitak. Uh, among the Borel dwarves, the thief found a wealthy buyer, the chief of a prosperous tribe. A generation later, the tribe fell on hard times and was raided by both by that far archipelago pirates and pale elves from the White Dwends. The pile elves sold the stolen eye to merchants from Old Valia, who took it north to the Prince of Darkozy. It remained there for two generations. When Darkozy Palace was sacked, one of the invading soldiers took the eyes as a prize, carrying it across the sea to Ozia and the Valen Republics. It was still there when the Grieving Mother arrived. Though the wealthy patriarch who owned the eye demanded a hefty sum, the Gilanfatan Amanfata did not hesitate to pay the price. Interesting. And nothing else here. Okay. Certainly. Let's go very quick here. And if nothing else is here, let's go. Let's go back to Stalwart for a quick nap and then to Durlux Durgan's battery. Okay, so we are now at Stalwart again, and first thing which we need to do is finish the last bounty hunt. Right here. Also exchange the weapon. Looking for work? I know we've got plenty to do around here. The terror of Fightstone Hollow has been dealt with. Good to know this one's taken care of. A shame we lost all those people, but at least we'll finally be able to get some workers out there to clear up that avalanche. Here's the reward, as promised. 
had some new reports come in, though you might be interested out anyway. There's a group of Lagafet causing trouble at Whitestone Hollow, like the avalanche wasn't bad enough, right? Then there's a pirate Berno brain lot that the fangs want dead. I'll take on the Lagafath. And a little nickname for themselves, Redwater Lagafath, on account these little charmers drag their prey under the water. They turned up in the Whitestone Hollow recently and have been menacing the locals. Plenty of coin in it for the one who takes them out. Tell me more about this pirate, Brinlot. A cipher from the Deadfire Archipelago, the kind that uh, swings onto a ship and convinces the entire crew to drown themselves. Apparently, Brinlot heard some stories about the kind of treasures that turn up in Anguithan ruins. He is come and land. The Fangs set their best warriors after bringing lot after he poached a few temples, but they didn't put a scratch on him. Where this brain lot has last was last spotted around Derford Crossing. Bring me Drainlot's head, and you can collect on the payment the Fangs are offering. So two more bounty quests or do tasks. Ah. I claim the bounty on the terror of Whitestone Hollow. Violent tremors have disrupted the Lagufath and the White Marsh, and many have grown more aggressive. The wars of this inhabit the lake at Whitestone Hollow and have become a danger to the travelers and homesteaders there. Locals have taken to calling them a Redwater Lagufath. Aska asked me to eradicate the Redwater Lagafet and bring their broodmother's head as proof. Brinald, an infamous pirate from the Deadfire Archipelago, has been scouring the ruins of Erglanfath for Anguithan resource treasures. The six tribes of Erglanfath won his desecration stopped at once. Brinlot was the last spotted between Dwyerfort and Kayab and Rilak. The Fangs have sent uh, their best against him, but to no avail, they're desperate for anyone who can put to end to his violation of the ruins. Let's check the map. Here will be the Dwyerfort crossing. Okay. Certainly. Oh, let's check the journal a little bit. Okay, it's this. And this is the next what we want to do. Okay. So, if nothing else, let's talk to the innkeeper. Afraid I don't have any more bounties. And get some beauty sleep. Gods forgive me. Back to warm your hands, eh? What can I do for you? I'd like a room. Top quality bear pelts on every bed. You won't be disappointed. And this one, Dexterity Mine and Constitution. And I would probably want to check just out of the curiosity the 
the ex-mayor or the new mayor of the village. The Abidonians took over well, the temple. Stalwart needs skills miss more than ever. And greet. The toilet is still full. Hmm, indeed. Oh, Durian. Let's talk to him. Durian notices you and his eyes bulge in surprise. He looks from side to side and holds a finger to his lips. The others made it back from the fort thanks to you. All except for that fanatic. But you know all about her. He gives you a knowing look. You should choose your people more carefully. Don't I know it. But what I really want to know is about those... creatures. The others saw them in the snow. Magfolk with arms like maces, they said. And dead by your hand. He gives you a slow, respectful nod. The eyeless. I always thought those were hunter's tales. His eyebrows shoot up. <clears throat> he clears his throat and runs his hand along Patchy's stubble. I can't tell the rest of Stalwart about them. Not until we know more. The superstitious ones will call it a bad omen. Another example of the ill us outlanders have brought. He shakes his head. And it won't help when folk hear a dark still at large. He's retreating. That's what you wanted. That was before he took our people hostage. Look, I appreciate what you did. I just hope he doesn't come back with a bigger army. Farewell. Okay, that was it. And we have this a little bit of full again, so... Let me see. Let's check the bounty. Nope, let's go to the Dur Durgan better first. I was running around a lot of time, so let's go there to finish it. And ready the cannons. And here we are. So... Oh man, I give you a taste of that fire you're pining for. We wasn't in such pleasant company. Reduce metal to shapeless liquid. It's where your kind belongs, along with all the other abominations of animancy. Oh. He doesn't like her much. It seems like it. Oh. Looks like the map changed a little bit from my last visit in the first part of the expansion. Let's see what's new up here. A few workers. Hopefully, we'll get our hands on the cannons at the top of the West Tower. 
and we'll make Stalwar a safer place. Let's check a little bit around. Oh, a beer. Let's check the inside, maybe. Or the top floor first. You want me to go back up there after nearly losing my leg? You still got it, don't ya? Hmm. We have few. Okay, let's talk to Vengra first. And the Kurumara and the Gar. The back of the Orlan's head is a patchwork of synced green brown fur and dark scar little flesh. She notices you and jumps back on foot. One of her staring eyes is gold and the other is hazel. She flicks her left ear, which is a little more than a nap on her skull. At least she relaxes. Ha! Took you for one of them red sarens. Then I saw you had all your teeth. <laughs> She's shooting at you, but a friendly smile warms her face. She smells of sulfur and smoke. I've also got more than half a brain. Hang on, gotta talk into my good ear. She yells even louder, swiveling a hairless but whole ear toward you. Now what was... Say, ain't I seen you somewhere? She scratches a belt patch on her cheek. I... Well, shrug. No, I got it. You're the one who got us into this place. She thumps the wall with her fist. And you fired up the White Forge. Wonder glimmers in her eyes. Must have been a real side up close. All that fire. Oh. Yeah. What are you doing here? Oh, you know, clearing tunnels, blowing old barricades, just tidying up. She grins, showing all of her teeth. But soon, I've got to start testing the cannons. Her voice has dropped to a whisper, or at least her closest approximation of one. She claps her hands together and looks up at the high tower with nearly a religious reverence. You'll need them. The Islas ambushed us after we confronted Ederic. That what they're called? All I know is they turned the Iron Flail's fort into kindling. She looks impressed. Surely these walls can protect you. They've held for centuries. I don't know. Something tore through that place a long time ago. She jerks her thumb toward the double doors and gives you a meaningful look. Anyway... We can stop them. She rubs her hands together. Once we have the heavy cannons, that is. She looks up once more. I've heard they could hit a target over five miles away. Oh, I'd give my other ear to see that. Her expression melts into bliss. What's the problem with the heavy cannons? They're all the way up there. She points up an tower that punches through the snow blurred clouds. I sent a crew to the tower, but they came back complaining about Skuldrak and the other nasties. Nearly took Kulmar's leg off. Skuldrak did, I mean. She blinks quickly. I could look into it. 
That'd be a big help. I'd hate to let those beauties go to rust up there. She twitches and fidgets uh, like a drunk and visioning a tipple. And anything you find up there is yours. Batteries full of treasures, and the West Tower has hardly been explored. Head through the door and up the stairs. That'll get you to that rampart. She points up uh, the snow-dusted walkway. Yeah, Kulmar cleared the rubble before he took to getting himself conveniently injured. You should be able to work your way up to the cannons from there. Meantime, I'll check on our black powder stock. She gives you a smile full of jagged teeth. Wengra told me that the heavy cannons are at the top of the West Tower. However, she also said that the workers she sent to reclaim them were attacked by beasts. Any luck with those cannons? No rush, I mean. Can you use the cannons down here? No disrespect to these beauties, but they can't match the big guns for distance or power. She waves at one of the frozen cannons. You little like explosions. Well, back in Stalwart, I learned everything Dana knew about black powder, and a few things she didn't. Them she wasn't so happy about. She frowns, looking momentarily distracted. After what might have been a small mishap in the Stalwart mines, they sent me here to put my talents to better use. For Evel. Let's talk to Kulmar. Good to see you around here again. Hmm. That's it? Well met, stranger. He scratched his head. Wait, I know you. You're the one that cracked this jelly jar in the first place. He laughs and claps you on the back. In that case, well met indeed. And thanks for the job. He leans forward to shake your hand. As he does, you notice that he's favoring his right leg, and his left hand is roughly bandaged. I shouldn't talk too long or I'll get an earful. He glances over his shoulder. Mm, aren't you Myla's father? He beams, sure am. What's my little troublemaking gotten into this time? Uh, do you know her disease? That's... he's initially confused, but greens uh, the mess of lines. White's and hello, huh? He steps a closed finger at spot on the sketch. I think these are supposed to be the standing stones. Look at that, my kid's an artist. He smiles at the drawing. Thanks for bringing me... Thanks for bringing this. I'll take it up next to my cot. He takes the picture and carefully takes it away. What happened to you? Bad hip that got worse after a night with Kulmar's rot gut. He lost, but he's wincing too. It will heal. Just go to fix this place up before anything else falls apart. For a will. Okay, so let's get inside. From here you can access any level within the battery. Where would you like to go? First, uh, the White Forge. Because we still have some ingots which needs to be smelted. Oh, it's a new heavy stones block the hall. Wow, so everything else here is closed off for the time being. Big change from the first part of the expansion. If you say so. Wheels and levers from Minecraft lay scattered.
We opened the west tower, didn't know we'd be there with so many school drug. One more ingot. I watering heat wafts from the mouth of the White Forge. The surface of the anvil hums with power, it's warm to the touch. Oh. We can make four, so let's do this. Good. So let's get back to the top. And it is the grid hall. So let's see what's new up here. Hand me one of those. Quarter food will do, but make sure it's not rusted. I look, if not, Corbel should have something that will work. We've made progress. Black powder, handle with care. A bronze statue of Abaddon stands over incense, ash and rusted metal tokens. Black powder, handle with care. A lot of workers here. Large streaked pots and dirty cups are stacked next to an out IQQ wash. Small holes collapsed. Some holes collapsed. Oh. Warm dripping simmers at the bottom of this pot. And we see a corbel here. Let's check this. If you say so. Got it done. I feel a little bit guilty, but what's this? Algard's K? What's this? They run away like the tower was on fire and the cowards. Wengra's none too happy. You a warrior now? Let me know when you hit up to fight the monsters. This cot smells smoky. It's stained with black powder and ash. Under the pillow are a child's screwed charcoal drawings. Heavy stones block the hole. Okay, enough running around. Let's talk to Corbel. This dwarf gives you a quick nod as he smears the grease and soot from his fingers on his apron. A copper chain dangling from his ear sparkles light in the firelight. I know who you are. Wouldn't be in this place if it weren't for you. He rubs the chair on his ear, flashing a half smile. What can I do for you? What is it that you do here? I'm running the excavation of lower levels and everything else around here supplies the kitchen quarters. When you need something, you come to me. I won't see the stars. Let's get to it. White Crest's Helm. What's that? Plus three intellect. 
interesting. And let's check the party. What headgear do they have? And we have something for Kana. Good. Four and five thousand gold spent well. Well, <laughs> it looks funny, but three intellect is three intellect. What's you this? this? Not a sound. Fine, exceptional, exceptional. To whispers and shadows. Do not remove any equipment from the armor without permission from Arsvard and Baron or Captain Gregor. Oh shit. It's too late. And I, my character feels guilty now. Let's see what lies this way. And I completely forgot that I should walk a little bit like this around to search for uh, hidden stuff. I wish I had read the paper a little bit sooner, but whatever happened, it's too late now. Everything started shaking, though the sailing would collapse on me. Ain't that special? Unnatural these streamers. We shouldn't have disturbed this place. It's a tomb. This statue of, uh, oh, this statue of Abaddon is mottled and tarnished, but each bolt and rivet appears crafted with meticulous detail. Okay, let's get to the West Tower then. It sure is good seeing you. Nobody's been able to push those monsters out of the tower. Let's check the other places, other stuff here. Uh, 
and let's get back to the West Tower. I will walk unseen. I'm happy now that I went for the nap in the inn. In Stalwart. And first school drug. Let's kick him. Unseen. Certainly. Yeah! I really love this spell. If not, there you go, here. Not even. The map shows the peaks and passes surrounding Durgan's battery. Faded red circles mark the choke points. Artillery lift notice. The artillery lift will be closed until further notice. The cocks are rusting and any failure in the mechanism can be catastrophic. Potion Master Andren is looking into patinating the cocks to make them waterproof. Weatherproof. Light, flame, and sound. We'll keep to ourselves. Okay, let's get through these doors first. And lead the way. Let's put Manaha first inside. Mm. Oh. Now, oh, still zero. 
Yes. Perfect. Good thing I'm fresh. The Verlint was now placed perfectly. Zawa is ready. Certainly. On the treatment and preservation of cannons, this page seems to be from some larger text. We now have a treatment to prevent our prized cannons from rusting outside. Potion Master Andren developed a solution that seals the metal, protecting it from cold air. We've transformed the old armory into a petination chamber, where we can heat the solutions into a gas. As the gas suffuses the chamber, it will build up a hard coating on the cannons. After a few weeks, the cannons will be ready for the elements. However, we must be careful around the solution. One of Andrin's assistants scalded her throat just from breathing too close to the stuff. The rest of the manuscript has fallen apart over time. Cannon wrench key. And another grimoire. Okay. I think a lot will have a lot of to check next time I'll meet I will walk him at the end. If you say so. Got it done. Where are you? Oh, a little bit confused about this, but Get here and you. That didn't work. Certainly.
more school drugs, but so let's see this one first, then we will go there again. More Durgan ingots. Okay, let's go to school drugs first. Finish them! Unseen. What a marvelous machine! Solid dwarven craftsmanship. We're not setting foot on that, are we? Okay, we will still need to find some stuff. And probably some lever is missing here. Let's see what we got. integration Choose more the Let's see what lies this way. Kind of spells or chants or how it's called. Yes. Let's Certainly. check inside this place. Oh, look at here. Yes, yes, we see something hidden. Mental of the excavator, perception plus four. Uh, okay. This might be interesting. Let's check if someone has perceptions in the cloak. Looks like only. Not only. Okay. 
So Kana has a new nice cloak with a uh, shitloads of perception. I shall be quiet as a calm sea, which is not very quiet. If you say so. Got it done. Let us compete to see who can breathe this poison the longest. Okay. This will need to wait a little bit. Lever request. This note is written in fine script. The lever for the artillery lift has broken again. I've been telling my men to be as careful as possible while using the lift, but it's difficult to keep your balance on the thing. One bad bump nearly sent a handful of them off the edge and I'd rather they break a lever to keep their balance than fall off. Unfortunately, it was a clean break this time. We'll need this lever as soon as possible. Scrolled across the bottom and thick ink is an additional note. If your men stop taking up so much ammunition at a time, this wouldn't be a problem. This will be the last lever you, get, you ever get next time you're just getting a rammer. Okay, I don't think I put everything in there. This. Here. The cannons are called uh, are called as eyes and bended by angular patterns and prayers to Abaddon. That'll do. And Warren Lever. Okay, so we have something more. And you again. First finish the spider. Spider. Certainly. Okay, I will, we will be checking this uh, later. Because it will lead us somewhere.
Mana hub. Well. I shall be quiet as a calm sea. And one more spider here. I will walk unseen. Certainly. We'll see what can we find here. Yellow gelatinous residue lines bottom of the broken tube. Find blonde bus. What's this? Good. We have one more quest item. Who knew a creature as disgusting as a disease pudding could be so useful? Their ability to not only prevent metals from rusting, but to remove rust entirely is astounding. I can only imagine what sorts of contraption we can devise without having to worry about exposing iron to the elements. As always, I get ahead of myself. Finding these creatures is already a chore. Keeping them properly contained is nearly impossible. I was lucky to acquire what uh, what few I have. If you say so. Got it done. Oh. Oh, not scroll potions. Uh, well, we'll check this a little bit later. I probably already have that achievement, but I don't remember. Got it done. A stiletto. Flame of devotion and a hit. Do we have anyone with... No, someone else. Let's give it to Devil for now. And and this will be it for now. So 
thanks a lot for coming for a visit and if you enjoyed my stream feel free to follow me on my twitch channel or on my mixer channel or subscribe to my youtube channel whatever you like the most so see you soon maybe in a few hours enjoy the rest of your day